So to summarize Gray's hash join, it's got partitioning phases to break things into B minus one partitions. And then it's got a build-in probe phase where each partition of R we assume fits in a memory space of B minus two. And then we do essentially naive hash join where we stream partitions of S and probe R looking for matches. So let's analyze the cost of that. Again, with our relations and their sizes listed up in the upper right, the partitioning phase, we read and write both relations. So that's two bracket R plus bracket S IOs. And in the matching phase, we read both relations and we stream data to the output. So that's just another R plus S. So the total cost of a two pass hash join, assuming no recursive partitioning of R, is three bracket R plus bracket S, or in this case, three times 1000 plus 500, which is 4,500 IOs. Now, what about the memory requirements for hash join? Well, we're gonna build a hash table on R and we're gonna hope for uniform partitioning. In the partitioning phase, we divide R into B minus one runs, hopefully of equal size. That size is bracket R over B minus one. And in the matching phase, we're gonna to need to have each R over B minus one partition fit into B minus two blocks of memory in order to do this without recursive partitioning. So for that to be true, R has gotta be less than B minus one times B minus two or roughly B squared as we knew from our external hashing algorithm, right? And again, as in naive hash join, note there's no constraint on the size of S, which means that if you have a gigantic S and a small R, hash join is a great algorithm because sort merge join would have to sort S and R. Whereas hash join only has to hash R, S can be left as just a scanned relation that's partitioned and reread. So uh, there's no recursion, there's no uh, recursive partitioning of S, which is great. We've actually learned two hash join algorithms, naive and grace, and it's not the case that one is always better than the other. In fact, sometimes naive hash join is better than grace. So think about this. Naive hash join does require that R fits in memory, bracket of R is less than B, which is a strong assumption. We have to put all of R in a hash table, obviously, but if we can do that, it's actually one third the IO cost of grace. We only scan R once and S once. And remember, S could be very big. So uh, that uh, is, a significant cost for grace. On the other hand, grace hash join is a two pass algorithm for R up to B squared, which is, you know, B squared is a lot bigger than B, right? So grace has much more dynamic range. And so you can see there's sort of a cost uh, diagram on the upper right, which uh, has the X axis being the size of R in pages and the Y axis being cost or number of passes of the algorithm, if you will. And of course it goes up again with recursive partitioning after this. And the question is, can you get something that's a little bit smoother than just switching from naive to grace when uh, R is bigger than B? Maybe we could come up with an algorithm that kind of smoothly interpolates between naive and grace hash join. So there is such an algorithm, it's called hybrid hash join. It kind of adapts between the two. It is, however, a bit tricky to tune. Uh, it makes some assumptions about distributions of keys and things that makes it a little bit dodgy. So hybrid hash join is very interesting. It's often taught, but it's less often used in practice because it is tricky to tune. And so we won't cover it in the class this year, uh, but you can certainly read about it on the web or in the original research papers.